We've got all the wineries from northwestern Michigan. We got we got the old Mission Peninsula out there. We got the Leelanau Peninsula over there. We got a Traverse City Winery. So we're we're basically coming together as northern Michigan wineries, and we're we're letting people experience our wine, taste our wine, and right now we're getting to all the people in the in the food service industry, so that they can get out there, be the soldiers on the front lines, and tell the story of of how good these wines are. Think of it this way, the, the wine here is world class. I need to know more about their wine and the only way I'm going to learn more is by tasting it. So they may not come to see me because they're, they're stretched. You know, these are small wineries, but just to come here and taste the wine and understand what they're doing is definitely going to make a huge difference in the way I go back and kind of, you know, preach the sermon. Where, where, where the wine industry is today and where it was five years ago or ten years ago or when it started in 1974 with Chateau Grand Travers putting in the first Vitus vinifera, European vinifera vines up here, is that every year we continue to set the mark higher. And what I mean by that is not only are we blessed by Mother Nature and having a wonderful vintages uh, recently, but all the winemakers as a whole, again, getting back to that collective synergy model, we're all working together because the rising tide floats all boats. And that's the way we look at, at this industry and this region, is that the more better wines that are being produced, the more awareness that we're going to get and quality awareness. I mean, this region is only as good as our worst bottle of wine. So we really, as producers, try and, and help each other out so that we make that experience to these new people that are coming to visit us that much better. The, uh, the question is how to get the word out to the wine drinking public at large and also restaurateurs, retailers, and, and other folks to make them aware of this. So I think this event is very important in that because uh, I've been telling people that these reasons we have here, um, the one region they remind me of most is the Tsar and the Ruver in the upper Mosul Valley of Germany. And it's the first time that I've ever had those characters show up in a region here in North America. Uh, we know that there are other regions in North America that make quality reasons, but, uh, but Michigan has a distinctive um, set of qualities that takes you right back to um, a very classic part of Germany. And winemakers can't put that in the wine you know, artificially. It's either there or it's not. So uh, I'm really impressed with, with Michigan Riesings and what we have here are going from very dry and also very young from 07 to um, uh, fairly sweet, but the consistency is both the, the bright, fresh fruit character and the bracing acidity. So people think of Riesling as sweet, which is not true because, um, for example, all the Riesling from Australia is dry. But what we do know about Riesling is that it's a balance of fruit and acidity, and Michigan Rieslings do a beautiful job of that. I think one of the biggest misconceptions about Michigan wines are that they're inferior to their California counterparts or especially their European counterparts. And to those people I say, you haven't had one lately. What you really have to appreciate is that even though it's fun to kind of beat up on what's around you, the Michigan wine industry is incredibly young. It's only about, for all practical purposes, about 20, 25 years old of, of making modern wines. And in that time frame, they've just jumped through hoops and have and garnered all these awards. And the breadth of what we're doing in Michigan is amazing. And to keep in mind also that these wines aren't just for special occasions. A lot of these wines are everyday drinking wines. You know, we're not just producing Rieslings and Gewurz, we're doing un oak Chardonnays, we're doing these Cab Merlot blends. The, I guess the answer is, is that people might perceive Michigan wines as just, it's not, it can't be as good as the ones made in California. It's the, you know, the grass is greener someplace else. No, no it's not, it's, it's as good, especially if you do a blind tasting. I think the future is absolutely wonderful. Uh, not only have we packed in several great vintages in the 2000s uh, so, um, so far, um, but um, the quality, the level of participation, more wineries are continually going in on Old Mission and Leelanau Peninsula. The acreage is quadrupled in the last decade up here in terms of vines, uh, vineyards 
in the ground, uh, land planted to uh, vinifera vines. And so um, I think it's, again, an opportunity that we all have as an industry to really get, get these wines out. And, and every year there's more and more placement and more and more wineries. But the question is, are you willing to give Michigan Wine a fair evaluation against wines from other places? Now, it's true, Michigan Wine is not stylistically like California wine because they're different climates. But if your model is Europe, again, go back to France, and Champagne, Burgundy, Alsace, and, and in Germany, uh, these wines are much closer to those regions than to California. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing.